Hey everybody, Ed Bowder from the Med School Medic Podcast, medschoolmedic.com. We're here with your five minute EMS refresher and today we're gonna talk about ketamine. Ketamine is a drug that I really enjoy giving. Uh, it works very well for a wide range of uh, acute clinical presentations. So we're gonna go over just the pharmacology of the drug and how to give it and um, talk about a little bit of the history of the drug as well. So the drug itself kind of came out decades ago, and it got sort of a bad rap. Um, there was a lot of concern about patients taking ketamine recreationally and then having emergence reactions uh, afterwards. So you always hear about you know, the special K type of joke, you know, it's not for breakfast anymore. But I want to talk about how the drug itself actually works and how it might actually help you or the patient in the pre-hospital setting or even in your emergency department or critical care unit. So the way the drug actually works is ketamine blocks your NMDA receptors, which is causing the sedation effect, and also blocks the mu receptors uh, in the cell, that the same receptors that opiates hit, that causes uh, analgesia. So the reason that this matters is there's not a whole lot of drugs out there that have both a sedative and an analgesic effect. That's one of the biggest things we're looking for with a drug like ketamine. We want to give it in a setting for like RSI, or you can even use it to reduce a shoulder or to reduce any other type of injury. The reason that matters for RSI is you also, if you have a patient who might not be a good candidate for RSI, where you have to paralyze the patient with something like succinylcholine or uh, rocuronium, you can give a higher dose of ketamine and try and get that dissociative effect, and that'll actually allow you to facilitate the intubation. The great thing about ketamine is that you can use it for almost everything. The data that's coming out is showing us that we can use it not just for RSI or for DSI, it's delayed sequence intubation, but we can also use it for just generalized pain management. You know, you can give, say, like 0.5 milligrams per kilogram for uh, chest pain, um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. So right now what we're looking at is with the dosing of ketamine itself, if you're looking for someone that you need to RSI, someone whose airway just has failed and you need to control it, you've got one to two milligrams per kilogram IV push for your initial RSI dosage. Now this is something that you can give one to two milligrams per kilogram on the front end, give, perform the intubation attempt, and then on the back end give another one to two milligrams per kilogram of ketamine. You can give this drug at fairly high dosages to the point where you may feel a little bit uncomfortable with the dose because it feels like it might be a little bit too high for you. If you're at, you have a patient who has something like excited delirium, now this is a patient who is either maybe having an emergent reaction to something or if they've taken a sympathomimetic, um, something like bath salts, or they have, you know, say something like cocaine or some, some sort of sympathetic drug in their system at a fairly high dose, you can give ketamine at three to four milligrams IM. And this works out really well because this is a patient that you really need to control and you're worried for their safety or for your safety or for the safety of the people around you. Really easy to give, five to 10 minute onset, same thing as any other uh, IM drug that you're going to give, and it works pretty well. The patient's usually made able, able to maintain their own airway very well after you give this drug. The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting about ketamine is at low doses, they're finding that it's actually really good for patients who have depression or mood disorders, anxiety, bipolarity, things like that. There's a website, it's called Ketamine Saved Me, and uh, this woman actually talks about her story with depression like that. Fairly easy to, um, to see and kind of interesting to read from the medical standpoint. But the other thing, too, is there's some emerging data that's showing that giving up to four milligrams per, kilo, per kilogram in RSI is somewhat effective as well. And again, this is a patient that you're concerned about intubating, but you don't really want to paralyze them because you're not really entirely 100% positive that you can maintain their airway once you take away their muscle reactions. So something like four milligrams per kilogram of ketamine is something that is going to knock them down, sedate them, provide that analgesia because you have to remember that intubation is also a very painful procedure. So we give that high dose of ketamine, we intubate them, the drug tends to last long enough that we can perform the RSI and we can still get fentanyl on the back end. Now one of the concerns that always comes out with ketamine is, well, what if they have an emergence reaction? What if I've given this drug at this high dose and now the patient wakes up and they just start wiling out and I don't really know what to do with them? The nice thing is that emergent reactions with ketamine are actually fairly seldom. They don't happen all that often. But if they do and it's something that you're really worried about, you can also give a benzodiazepine somewhere on the back end, something like Ativan, uh, Versed, or Valium, depending on what you carry. And you want to adjust the dosing. It's a general anxiety dose, depending on what your shop gives. So that's ketamine. Blocks the NMDA receptors, blocks the mu receptors, uh, the opiate receptors there. Causes analgesia. And it causes sedation. Really good drug for RSI. Really good drug for DSI. That's your five-minute EMS refresher. My name is Ed Bowder from themedschoolmedic.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe down below in YouTube, and find us on iTunes. Have a good one.